Welcome to HelpYourMath.com. In this video, we're going to look at verifying trigonometric identities. Before we get to that, let's just review some of the identities that we can already apply to the ones that we're going to try to prove. So first are the Pythagorean identities. That would be sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is equal to 1. And then from that main Pythagorean identity, we have two kind of like residual ones. The first one is tangent squared theta plus 1 is equal to, and this would be secant squared theta. And the third one is that cotangent squared theta plus 1 is equal to, and this would be cosecant squared theta. Some other properties we might want to keep in mind, we do have our reciprocal identities. And so the reciprocal identities would be that cosecant of theta is 1 over sine of theta, secant of theta is 1 over cosine of theta, and cotangent of theta is 1 over tangent of theta. And then two other properties we might want to keep in mind are just the ratio identities, which is the fact that tangent of theta is equal to sine theta over cosine theta, and cotangent of theta, which is the reciprocal of tangent, would be cosine of theta over sine of theta. And one more thing to keep in mind, so what we saw with the Pythagorean identities is the idea of that exponent being right there. That exponent just means that it's sine of theta quantity squared. We just put the exponent because we're squaring the function itself. Okay, so let's look at our first example. We have cosine squared beta times tangent squared beta is equal to 1 minus cosine squared beta. So we have to decide which side we think looks messier. It's going to be a little bit more work to deal with. Uh, and in, in this case, you can justify either one, right? One has multiplication, but the other one has subtraction. I say we start with the left-hand side and see if we can get the right-hand side. So first, I'm going to say, okay, everything is cosine except for tangent. So let's rewrite tangent so that we can use uh, write it with, with something involving cosine, which would be, so this is going to be sine squared beta times tangent squared beta would be sine squared beta over cosine squared beta. And then we can put cosine squared beta over 1. And let's see what happens here. Okay, so those end up canceling. Interesting. Now we have sine squared beta. Well, how does sine squared beta relate to 1 minus cosine squared beta? This goes back to that Pythagorean identity we just talked about. So the Pythagorean identity that we saw said sine squared, it said theta. So we'll just go back to theta, though it really doesn't matter. Plus cosine squared theta is equal to 1. Well, if we subtract cosine squared theta from both sides, then it would say sine squared theta is equal to 1 minus cosine squared theta. So I think we're going to take this and substitute it right here. We can rewrite sine squared beta as 1 minus cosine squared beta, and then we have a match with the left-hand side and the right-hand side. We do want to keep in mind that when we are verifying trigonometric identities, we only manipulate one side. So that's why I had to rewrite sine squared beta as 1 minus cosine squared beta instead of rewriting 1 minus cosine squared beta as sine squared beta. We only manipulate one side. So this is going to stay as is. We're going to make this match the other side. Okay, in the next example, we have tangent of alpha plus cotangent of alpha. Actually, those aren't alphas. Those are just a's. So tangent of a plus cotangent of a is equal to secant of a times cosecant of a. And it's a little bit tricky to see which one we want to manipulate. I actually, the, the first time I did this, I manipulated the, the side that was going to take a lot more time to match the other side. Um, and, and again, that, that's helpful because there's really no like set thing. Like, oh, if you see addition, manipulate that side. That's not a guarantee, right? Because in this example, we manipulated the side with multiplication. Well, in this example, we're actually going to manipulate this side. And there's a few things that we can consider here. And as I mentioned, I tried this a few times, and I did get a few dead ends, which is all part of the process here, and that's okay. When we reach a dead end, we say, okay, let's try something else. And so the one that's going to work here is what I noticed about the right-hand side is that secant is the reciprocal of cosine, and cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. So maybe I need to take the tangent and cotangent and get them in terms of sine and cosine. Well, tangent would be sine of a over cosine of a, and cotangent would be cosine of a over sine of a. Those are our ratio identities. Okay, so now from here, I notice that 
I only have one term on the right hand side, so how can I combine fractions? Well, I need a common denominator. So the least common denominator here will be cosine of a times sine of a. So over here I'm going to multiply by sine of a under sine of a. Now I have the two factors I need for that denominator. And here I'm going to multiply by cosine of a over cosine of a. So this will give me sine of a times sine of a will be sine squared a over sine of a times cosine of a plus cosine of a times cosine of a will be cosine squared of a over sine of a times cosine of a. You notice I interchangeably use parentheses and not. I like parentheses just to, to keep the, the function kind of together in my opinion, but they're obviously unnecessary. Okay, so now we can combine the numerators. So we're going to get sine squared a plus cosine squared a over that common denominator sine of a times cosine of a. And now sine squared of a plus cosine squared of a, well that's a Pythagorean identity. That equals 1. So this here is equal to 1. So I'm going to come up here and say, okay, so now we have 1 over sine of a times cosine of a. And now how do I make it look like the right hand side? Well 1 over sine of a, we might recall, is cosecant of a. And 1 over cosine of a would be secant of a. And pretty sure nobody's going to care if you have the factors in the wrong order the way I do, since it is commutative. But we can see it now officially matches the right hand side, and we have successfully verified this identity.